All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast, brought to you each and every day by Aura Ring. I'm your host, Lance Armstrong. Looking a little different today, if you see this on YouTube or one of the video formats, sitting here with J.B. Hager and a man who looks completely different because he finally shaved his face. Had, had to do it. You know, I looks promised tense. I was going to do it on the last day. It was a big decision. I'm not sure I like it. I, I, I'm not sure I like the, the clean shaven look anymore. It might be better too if you talk into the mic. But I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna roll with that. Uh, looks, looks ten years younger. Well, thank you. You know, that's at, a good a good thing. As I mentioned, today's show is brought to you by Aura Ring and JB. You'll remember back years ago. We we it was just you and me, just a couple of hacks sitting in a, a, a an RV doing the show. Had no supporters, no uh, uh, ads, no mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've, we've been blessed to have awesome support, you know, like by Aura Ring, who's our presenting mm -hmm. sponsor. But I struggle. You do you know, a good job. Uh, no, but sometimes, getting... you know, people, ah, yeah, why you have all the ads? Um, I know, I know. Right. And, but I, it's a struggle, man. And just sometimes it feels like I could use some help. You mean like, like a professional pitch man? Exactly. Huh. Well, look what. no further. <laughs> Hi, Anthony Sullivan here for the Aura Ring. Are you tired of waking up foggy and waking up groggy? Are you tossing and turning? Then you need the incredible Aura Ring. That's right, the Aura Ring is absolutely amazing. It will track your deep sleep, your latency, your body temperature, REM sleep, HR variability. I'm not done. You even get your readiness score, respiratory rate, and your resting heart rate. But wait. It will even track your body temperature so you can help track COVID. That's right, the Aura Ring is absolutely incredible. Any person, big or small, the Aura Ring will fit them all. <laughs> <laughs> the secret is the biometric sensor technology that tracks your sleep so you wake up feeling refreshed with a pep in your step. It's the muscle without the tussle. It can be yours for three easy payments of $99.99, but I'm not done. We'll throw in a free sizing chart. That's right. This is used by George Hincapie, Lance Armstrong, and J.B. Hager, and the WNBA, the NBA, <laughs> the UFC. Track your sleep. You'll wake up feeling great, but I'm still not done. Order now. I'll throw in a whopping three-pound tub of OxyClean, a bottle of Mark Kush. I'll get this signed by Lance and George. <laughs> And even a pair of Roka aviators. Go to auraring.com right now. That's O U R A ring.com right now. Order yours today. Okay. Now, Thank let me. You, Thank you, Sully. That, that, the move has taken an, another holy step forward. Shit. <laughs> so, I just, before you leave, Sully, I just have a question because I don't watch TV. I'm assuming you, and I, every time we go around somewhere, people are like, ooh, that's an ox clean guy. <laughs> Uh, is so I don't know what you do, right? But is that the way you do it when you're on TV? Um, is that like jumping around like that? Yeah, well, I got wow. a lot of energy. I used to work with the late great Billy Mays, so I, I took a couple of um, pages out of his book. But that was full gas. <laughs> and, 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 and you, you clearly don't normally do this at altitude. No, I'm not, well, you know, it's a performance right there. It's a performance. But I am no. going to go on YouTube after this, and I'm just going to, for like the rest of the afternoon, I'm going to watch this stuff. Well, listen, I appreciate you having me on the show, guys. I really do. Thank you, Lance. We right, appreciate George, you, you're brother. Awesome. You look good. good. You look good, JB. Thank you for having me. Love the move. Go to AuraRing.com right now and take control of your sleep. There's our flow right. code. There's our flow code for those watching. So if if I'm going to be some kind of pissed if Aura has record sales today. <laughs> is you know? he going to pop up for every product? That is, <laughs> wow. That was for amazing. Real, I don't watch, like, I don't. Sully, I don't that was next level. I'm going to start watching. I might even start watching TV now. <laughs> should I try? Maybe I should try it for PowerDot. <laughs> I don't think you can, you can do that. I, I would. I would. I don't, you know what, guys and gals, next summer, okay? And we're going to talk about next year's tour at the end of this show, but... Whoa, <clears throat> I feel like I need a <laughs> stiff drink after that. Uh, what's that noise? I have no idea. I'm vibrating. Oh, my Lord, JB, rookie. Uh, today's show also brought to you by PowerDot. Uh, we, we talk about it every day. I just absolutely love this product. I actually just flew to Indianapolis for that speech last night, got back early this morning, had, took it with me. I mean, I was just on the plane, just PowerDot in a way. And, you know, certain, you know, it's just aches and pains on this old boy's body. Uh, we made an investment in this company years ago uh, and continue to just be so proud of the whole team. Fully integrated with Apple Health and Strava. 
athletes in the tour and all the big leagues are using it. Money back guarantee. So if it doesn't work for you, you're not digging it, send it back. Get your money back. Head on over to powerdot.com slash the move. 20% off with the buy code the move. And they're also doing great things for mankind, giving away free meals for feeding San Diego and uh, feeding America. So thanks to Eric and his wife for that. Uh, last one here for a second also, and this is just a special one today because I, I love putting on my silver titanium Roca aviators, but if you're not watching the show, it, it, you don't have, it, you can listen, but just catch a little bit of it later on YouTube or something. I mean, we all looking good. Like this is crazy how good we all look. Right. And George, this is, by the way, this is George's idea, but I just feel like now's the time to rock the silver a- aviators with this look that I got going on. Um, how sick are these? You look like a man on a mission. The look is completed. I'm a very serious man right now. Uh, so this company started by badass athletes, specifically for badass athletes. That means each and every one of you. Uh, these are the titanium aviators. Love them. They got the gecko grip so you can go out and you know run or ride or fish or whatever the hell you want to do. They don't fall off ever. Mm-hmm. And they're light and, and you look like this. Let me, get, let me get a little, little, you want, you want little taste of this clean shaven yeah, look. We might even have a little surprise for you later with those on. Really? Yeah. Oh, how you doing? Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, I, I will just admit this, and I don't want to admit it. You, I actually think you look better than me. <laughs> I mean, that takes a lot for me to say that. Well, I love the tie, though. I love the we do tie. I got the we do tie. We'll, we'll, we'll zoom in on that maybe <clears> later. Uh, that came from our good friend Matt McGinty years ago. He sent it to me. I was like, when the fuck am I ever going to wear that tie, Matt? And today is the day. Pulled it off today. Like today, who won the Tour de France? <laughs> today is the day I'm going to wear a tie. I hate wearing ties. Uh, head on over to Roka, R-O-K-A dot com. There's our flow code. Type in the move for 20% off your first purchase. Well, boys, that was... Uh, I don't even know what to talk. I mean, should we talk about, uh, you know what? We, we forgot our poor, we got so, we got so verklempt over <laughs> uh, Sully and that pitch, which I'm still like, I, I was sweating before because of the tie and then I was really sweating after. Uh, we forgot Alain talking about stage 21. On his last day. Stage 21, Mont La Jolie, oh. to Paris Champs-Elysées. Mont, <laughs> Mont, Mont, Le, Le, Mont Le, Le Jolie to Paris Champs Elysees, which, by the way, was an eerie place. There wasn't, you know, you had some officials there, maybe a handful of, of uh, key sponsors, but the lining of the sh- there was nobody. They had no no spectators allowed. It was yeah. freaky. No, not not many cars either. There was no none of the motorbike uh, motorcycles were allowed in that weren't essential. So the journalists had to pull off before they got to the circuit. I did see a lot of people coming into Paris though, uh, so that was kind of nice to see and a little bit concerning, of course. Yeah. Yeah, you were, you've been reading the book. You've been reading the book. <laughs> uh, Sam Bennett, of course, proves that he deserves to win the green jersey. I mean, that was... He made that look pretty easy. He today. made that look pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had, he had an awesome lead out from Marikov. Uh, just perfect, perfect position. We've all done that finish many times. I've been in that same situation where I was leading out Mark Cavendish, and it's, it's stressful, it's fast, it's dangerous, but these guys, they held their composure. I mean, I was talking to you earlier about... Quick step always seems to get the sprinters at their peak. With with Mark Cavendish, obviously Bennett now, Viviani last year, Marcel Kittle. He they they have a, na- a knack for picking the, the best sprinters at their peak. Well, Patrick Lefevre is no dummy. I mean, he's been at this a long time, and and you know that whole team, all the other directors, they you know, yeah. I mean, they're they're they are they're the steppers, right? Yeah. So. Which, which is a uh, more emotional feeling after three weeks of suffering? When you first see the cityscape of Paris or when you hit, like, the Champs-Élysées? Oh, well, go ahead. Well, I mean, just, just, just coming, coming in, you can, you can see the Eiffel Tower in the distance. Uh, and no matter what place you're coming in, first, last, um, green jersey, polka dot, it really doesn't matter. The emotions are high. It's such a, it's such a brutally hard race that you get in there and you're just so happy that it's about to be over. I think that time you, 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 you know, you make that first bend cause you kind of come in from the outskirts and then you turn on as soon as you get on the, the, uh, the Champs-Élysées, you see the Arc de Triomphe. For me, that was like, oh man, right on the right, the Hotel Creon where we would always stay. And then the American embassy right there. I mean, that's just like embassy row there. It's crazy. I mean, it's, you know, it's a special, by the way too, we also noted, 
you know, and when we were racing, at least I, all my years, there was a, a, a hairpin turn at the top by the Arc de Triomphe. So they didn't go all the way around. They turned it. in front of it, right? They yeah. turned right in front of it. And it was like a 180 hot dog turn, right? And it was, if you were in the back and, you know, those guys are then going downhill sprinting and you're still hitting the brakes going uphill. It was it just strong. Yeah. It's totally different. Not that it affects the race. Totally different going all the way around. I was like, man, that would have been Well, not nice. to mention how, how much more <laughs> picturesque, picturesque it makes the... Uh, the circuit on the final, you know, final day of the Tour de France. Like, it's kind of uh, mind boggling that it took so long to actually do that. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Is this, is this Champs Elysees? <laughs> I want you to confirm something. This wasn't in our, our show notes, but I, you know, they did a, today did a short speech at the end. Mm. And I remember you doing it. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but someone said, no, they didn't do that right. until you did it. Right. And now it's kind of become. I, th- I thought they stopped at. I don't have a, I don't hang around much for the speeches. <laughs> I don't remember um, the last couple of years, but yeah, that was interesting to watch this year. Hmm. Huh? Huh? Is right. Well, we got to talk about him. I mean, he was he was, and we got a little intel, of course, through our our, our trusted source George over there with all the friends. Uh, we got some some information about some of his power data. You know, the kid was just exceptional. And it's interesting too. We also have it. This will be an interesting slide because we were talking about UAE, and I was, and I, and I hope it didn't come off as being critical. I wasn't trying to say that that team is weak. They just didn't have to do anything. They could, they could ride the wheels. They never had pressure to to carry the race or pull anything back or or, or pull in the mountains. But if you pull up this slide, Higgs, you'll see that actually, and this is this comes from Anne. And I don't even know what, and do you have any other thing to do in life? Because <laughs> this shit is scary. The fact that you can whip these things, and I know you do, Anne, I'm sorry, but the fact that you, this might even be easier for you, right? So she did another, yet another map and graph thingy for us. And look who won more stages than anybody else in this bike race. Team UAE. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we got to go back to uh, about, about a week ago when, you know, I was speaking to one of the guys very, very close to the UAE team, and they were actually saying we're actually happy that um, Pogachar lost a minute in the, that crosswind section because then all of a sudden they don't have any of the pressure to control mm. the race. So they were able to just sit back. When I mean, I mean that very lightly because it's still a very difficult job keeping your leader out of trouble, but not have to actually ever get to the front and, and do the, the grunt work, so to speak, uh, put them in the ideal situation. And according to Johan on on the additional show, if you didn't catch it, I mean, his intel says that was their plan all along. Mm-hmm. They had, had done recon. Uh, Pogachar had had ridden that time trial course like four times. Right. Got to rest in that day instead of pre riding it that same day. But that was their plan from the again at the get go. They knew it'd come down to that time trial. He did a full race simulation. He had no no power meter on there, no computer. So he just he knew that course uh, like the back of his hand, and he knew exactly the kind of effort he needed to do. And how much faster was he? That you know they keep times on all the uh, the these climbs, especially the iconic ones or the important ones. How much faster was he than well, I think you said Wiggins and well, Roman Bardet? Yeah, interestingly enough, in 2012, I believe uh, Wiggins got second on the stage. I think Froome won. Uh, I was I was yeah. there. Cadell Evans Froome was won. third. Um, it, but coming into that climb, I've done it a couple of times. You're coming into it with a peloton, so as you know, you come in with serious momentum, basically not even pedaling the first 500 meters. Uh, where yesterday, uh, Bogachar stopped, changed bikes, so went from a good speed coming in at threshold or over threshold, stopping, changing bikes, and reaccelerating. Getting, yeah, reaccelerating, getting that rhythm back. Still went 40 seconds faster damn. than those guys, uh, which is absolutely oh, mind-boggling. Damn. Apparently, you know it was what? around 6.9 watts per kilo for all you oh, watt nerds. Oh, man. That's the boom. I got to give him a boomstick for that. Holy shit. Yeah. Good for him. The other thing he did uh, uh, the last three weeks, which he's been riding Colnago for years, but uh, this is – and there's a little bit of a controversy around this. Johan, it, was, it took us to task a little bit, but um, – Technically, or as a branded Colnago, you bike fans have known, they've been around since 1952, so call it almost 70 years. Uh, This is one of the biggest and most iconic bike brands in the world. They've won every bike race known to man, except the Tour de France, right? Think about that, and that's hard to believe. That's amazing. Now, Eddie Merckx did ride a a, a Colnago, one of his tour wins, that was painted as as his own line, which he, of course, then went on to build and sell uh, many, many years later. But 
you know, to me, that's the first win on a Colnago. Yeah, yeah and it was great to see, um, sorry, Jibby, it was great right. to see uh, Ernesto Colnago actually with the bike uh, yesterday, making sure it came out nice, brand new yellow Colnago that got hand-delivered overnight, and the mechanics built it up this morning. The other thing Johan pointed out yesterday, you have um, all these new names that we've talked about. It's been the recurring theme for the last year. But not only was it Colnago's first win, you had Colnago and Bianchi duking it out. Mm. And he's like, these, right. these classic brands, yeah, which yeah. is kind of cool. It is cool. That, that is definitely very cool. Those are some of the most iconic brands in, the, in our sport. But I tell you, if you're Team Jumbo Visma, you, you got to be leaving here going, oh, man, what, happened? what just happened? What? It's like a bad dream. What, yeah. what happened? I mean, they, and we all thought that they had it in hand. You know, it's that's one of those things you wonder what what that does to a team long term. Yeah, I mean, I I I'm struggling to to imagine Primos being in that same position next year. Like I said yesterday, I mean, I feel like the stars were all aligned. Everything went absolutely perfect for him. He was in the best shape of his life. Like nothing, nothing at all went wrong for him throughout, throughout the whole Tour de France. You got someone like Pogachar, 21 years old, probably getting better, uh, will be better next year. You saw his numbers. I mean, looking at his numbers, I think even a, a very fit Froome, a very fit Bernal, you know, all these guys, I, I don't, at this level, they can't beat him with those numbers. Right mm -hmm. now, they can't beat him. And it's not fair to bring it up in hindsight, but, you know, if you were looking back going, what would we do differently if it, the same scenario, which we'll never get that chance to do. Well, George and I talked about yep. this, right? Would what would they, they have done? Would they have played the Dumoulin card? Cause he's they would have had to, yeah. enough of a GC threat. He was close enough. So do you play that, send him up the road, put them on the ropes a little bit, make them pull, make them work the team. Yeah. I mean, look, we that, can all sit here yeah. and I, you know, I always, I always hate these people saying, Oh, this is what you should have done. Right. Right. Yeah. What the fuck right. do you know? You don't know anything about bike <laughs> yeah. racing. And they so, rode with confidence. They rode with composure. I mean, they they rode like rock stars. So, I mean, yeah, they, they could have done some things differently looking back. But th throughout the race, it was just they just continued to impress. They had, you know, the best, the best team in the race by far. They won races in the sprints. They won the climbing races. Um, so, yeah, looking back, maybe they could have done different things. But I think they rode a perfect race. So if we did, here's a question for you, George. If we did have a section of the show that we just – it could be a daily section or a recap section where we talk about winners and losers, right? Not that we need to get into this, but do you think the Jumbo Visma – which category do they leave in? Whew. Uh, I started to see a little trickle coming down. <laughs> For them, lo losers. Yeah, Even though they had an amazing Tour de France, but they're leaving losers. I agree because they had one goal. They had one goal, and one they got goal. they yeah. were there. They just had to pull it off one more day, and they had an epic meltdown. Man, 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 man. Let's take care of a little business uh, before we get into the last part of the show. And and I have a feeling we have some embarrassing slides that nobody's shown me that are going to come up. Uh, but I just looked up at myself, and it, I, it, it's going to be okay, Lance. Yeah, you're looking good. <laughs> and look, I want everybody so, to see the weedy tie. Because seriously, McGinty is starting to climb up the building because nobody noticed that this tie is a weedy tie. So here, let me move over. <laughs> wait, wait, other side. You guys see that, right? How mm -hmm. sick is that? Thanks, Matt. <laughs> uh, today's show brought to you by Element. I talk about it a lot on the show, and it's it's not anything that I have anything to do with, other than I love it. This is the my go-to product for hydration. Uh, thank you to all the listeners and viewers for sending us literally a fire hose of hydration sensors over the last three weeks since I called it out that day. Uh, but this is one. Uh, this has been the one that works the best for me. I, I sweat my ass off as as I say every day, uh, and I need to be. I need replacement. Right? I drink coffee in the morning. I go out and work out hard, and you know maybe a couple glasses of wine. Dehydrate, dehydrate, dehydrate. It totally affects life, performance, clarity, sleep, all of it. Uh, Element T, these guys are, you know, partnership with the Navy SEALs, uh, USA Weightlifting, and the move. How about that? Uh, 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium, no sugar, no weird colors, and no artificial ingredients, and money-back guarantee. If you don't like it, they say, give it to a, a salty friend. Head on over to drinklmnt.com slash the move. There's our flow code. All right, last one of the day and last one of the tour. Also brought to you by Ventum, a total rocket ship of a bike, this NS1 road bike that I've been riding around on. And a lot of people have come by and looked at it at the house over the last three weeks. is amazing. This thing rides like a dream. It's fast. It's stiff. It's quiet. Uh, I just love it. And they're giving one away. Hello. 
Okay? I know I don't look like a kid from Plano right, right now, but I am. And actually, I'm not even from Plano. I was born in Oak Cliff. You know where Oak Cliff is? Oh, yeah. Okay, Oak Cliff, man. 49 years ago, Oak Cliff, fuck, you wouldn't have gone over there to no, save your life. That was a rough neighborhood. It's hipster yeah, now. Though. Right. Well, us, us, us dudes and guys like me come from Oak Cliff. Uh, where was I? Um, <laughs> but so what we would say in Oak Cliff or in Plano is cheap is neat, but free is for me. They're giving away a free bike. Head on over to VentumRacing.com slash the move. Register to win the bike. Also, 20% off any purchase until the end of October. Um, yeah, so let's talk about 2021. Uh, I know that's, what do we have? Uh, only 40. No, we don't have. What am I? We keep getting stuck thinking that this is July. It's not. I know. We don't even have to wait 49 no, weeks. No, it won't be that That's long. like a sullyism. But wait, <laughs> there's, more. there's more. You know, this gets better and better. We only have to wait, assuming the world goes back to normal, which hope it does. We only have to wait, I don't know, yeah, six less months. weeks. Yeah. So uh, this is going to be between, you know, obviously Bernal winning last year, um, Pogacar this year. By the way, the second youngest winner in the history of the tour, I would actually take uh, take that to task because, you know, the, the, the youngest winner was in 1904. Uh, most people divide cycling into pre- and post-war wars. And so in modern cycling, he's by far the youngest winner. Um, his birthday is tomorrow, by the way. What a birthday gift. Yeah, so the question is, is he's he going to go on to win five, six, seven tours? I'll remind you, we had this conversation last year about yeah. Ian Bernal. Yeah. We did. We said, oh, and I think I said, win, I said right? last year, I said, if I'm a 20-year-old kid that wants to be in this sport for 10 years, I might be looking for other things to do, be a classic specialist or a shorter stage race specialist. But we said that about him. Yeah. we got we got. There's no guarantees. He's got to stay Mosca, which, stay. which I got to remind you. Our good buddy Alan Piper gave the UAA team the Mosca speech. So, Dad, thank you. The Mosca <laughs> is living on. Be even better if you set it into the mic. It'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, that back to the. I mean, it's just you guys have brought it up again and again, and people don't realize how many stars have to align. Yeah. For consecutive tour win. I mean, yeah. it's just a million little things. Right. And and uh, we don't need to get into the. You know, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. We talked about it the other day, you know, handling the fame of this. He's, he's, you know, and, and I don't even know how many people are in Colombia. I barely know where Colombia is. It's bigger than <laughs> Slovenia, but it's a small country. He, he is going to be, if not the biggest sports star in that country, biggest star, then top three. So, yeah. you know, how he goes home and handles all that. Still got to come back and do all the hard work, you know. But it's, having said all that, you got Bernal, you got Pogachar, you got Remco. Dude, you got some, you know, who knows what Wild Van Art develops into. You know what might help him is for Pogachar is that we have all this rescheduled fall season. Normally there'd be worlds and kind of wrapping up. Yeah. So my question, and I was hoping you and I meant to ask you this last night, uh, Giorgio, but is he gonna do the worlds? That I'm not sure. Johan I mean, says can... yes. Oh. And and Roglic. Yeah, well, if if he's doing the how many days until the world's again? I think it's Sunday, so a week from now. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, if he if he, you have to, boy, you'd have to do it perfectly. It's a super hard course. If he can manage this week perfectly, yeah, I know. I mean, he's he's a young rider, and uh, he's already accomplished the biggest thing you can accomplish in cycling. I just I would I would hate to see the team push him too much the rest of this year. I mean, he's done such an amazing Tour de France. Uh, I'd hope I'd, I'd I'd like to see him have much less pressure for the rest of the year. Also, I would I want you to know because Higgs told me earlier um, we've had a lot of comments from the listeners that m a lot of them agree that the winner of the worlds doesn't come out of the Tour de France. So oh, really? just FYI, pretty right. boy. We'll see. Uh -huh. We're gonna see that on Sunday. Um, Nineteen professional wins already in his career, oh. dude. Think about that. I don't. It took yeah. me. I don't know how long it took me to get nineteen. That's, yeah, that's amazing. Insane. That's amazing. We got to talk about. Uh, we're going to give a boom stick award. I okay. appreciate when somebody emailed me about. Oh, wait till that. you hear an email about this too. We got to give a boom stick award for the best domestique of the Tour de France, ah. and we each have our own. I don't, I'm not sure you have one, JB, but mine's going to Wout Van Aert, domestique of the Tour, the best one. Not only did he win a couple stages, two stages, but he was the the, the rock star throughout for the, for the whole team, pulling on the climbs. Pulling on the crosswinds, uh, that is probably the best teammate you can have in a race. Monster. Up to you now. Monster. My, my boom stick. Here we go. For my boom. Boom. I, I, he's not in the race. He's not pedaling a bike. Oh, boy. <laughs> what? 
Yogi Bear? What no, are yeah. you? It's got, it's yeah, got to yeah. be the best domestique. Uh, I don't care about the. Yo, I don't care what you said. This is a more. This is. Okay. This is. I'm changing the award. Uh, my boomstick goes to Alan Piper. Yeah. Mm. I, I, this guy is. I said it the other day. He's one of the smartest guys in the sport. Uh, he is Johan Bernil esque. Uh, you know, he's been on a bunch of teams, and and he just. And I even remember when we used to race on Motorola with Sean Yates. He would always talk about Piper. He was like, yeah. man, Piper, man, Piper always knew it was going to happen. Uh, Piper always, you know, he, he just had a nose for any race, whether it's a Kermesse in Belgium or Perry Nice or the Tour mm. or the Worlds or Flint, didn't matter. He just had the nose. He was Mosca. He was Mosca before Mosca was Mosca. He was Mosca. <laughs> and I had the pleasure of working with Alan for a couple of years on, on High Road. And uh, not to mention, he just got over, uh, you know, a life and death battle with cancer. Man. So getting over that to where he is right now, Alan, we love you, man. And yeah. we were happy to see you back on the road and winning the biggest bike race in the world. Yeah, I was getting messages from a lady in Belgium, and I'd, I'd send Alan a, a couple of videos. And you know how these things go. Everybody, it, it's tough when you see somebody being treated. They don't look well, right? They don't look. They don't look like they're going to live. And so then people say, "Oh no, he's not. He's not going to live. He's not going to make." So we, not not that this particular case was like that, but um, you know, to bounce back from that. The man, the man, not only oh, is he incredibly smart on the bike, but he is a perfectionist. The, the man would carry around an iron in his suitcase and iron his shirt every day before he went out of Come the on, hotel man. room. Yes, he would. He is, mm -hmm. his suitcase was like perfectly packed, had an iron. I mean, he is as prim and proper as you can get. Damn. And breaking news, no sheiks in Paris on jizzies. No yeah. jizzies. Uh, Which is, that's the, the sponsors were there to. Well, maybe they're there tonight. No, they're worried nope, about they're COVID. They're not there. We asked. Uh, they're not coming. COVID. COVID no team parties. I guess there's the regs in France say that gatherings of that size are not allowed. Mm. So we were doing you know team parties and celebrations with hundreds of people, not just sponsors, yeah. fans, friends, family, and none of that. Well, I actually asked uh, our one of our on the road correspondents today, "What are they all doing?" And a lot of the teams were actually just catering, bringing food into their hotels, and uh, just staying in the bubble, so to speak. Hmm. I, I wouldn't have minded that. <laughs> Wait, I don't have, I'm tired. I don't have to go hang out. With we had some good people. parties, man. That one in 2005, that was pretty rock star. Legendary, legendary, legendary party. Legendary. JB, what else we got? Uh, we've got some slides and a few last email comments. Again, one pertaining to this swear jar. I, uh, like. we, yeah, because we, you know, I, uh, look, this show is what it is, right? It's, it's totally unfiltered. It's raw. It's our, it's our honest take on what's happened. And, you know, every time, every now and again, a, a bad word slips, but I'll get to the swear jar in a second. But that this, the, all the, you know, the few, I don't know how many Higgs probably, we probably got like a thousand emails. He said we got a few. So I don't, <laughs> I'd rather be, anyways, we'll try to make up for some of this. There's a silver lining inside that swear yeah, jar. In fact, I'll share that email now and then we'll get those slides ready. But uh, it says JB, George and Lance, I can't thank you enough for another great year of covering the Tour de France. Early on in the show, you mentioned the swear jar. But I quickly saw it disappear, and you guys never <laughs> mentioned it again. Just for fun, I started keeping a tally of every time Lance cussed on the show. Huh. And that's, that's not counting today. Th wow. You cussed. Are you ready? <clears throat> yeah. No, no, I'm not. Uh, you're going to tell me. It doesn't matter. Because you said you were going to make a donation for every, right? Yeah, I haven't said that yet. <laughs> <laughs> you cussed 105 times which is about an average of five times per show. I just thought you might want to know. That's from Tony G in Tony Colorado. Tony G. Well, Tony G, here's your silver lining. And, and I'm going to talk about a charity that I'd like to dedicate this to. So in this, and I'm going to make this deal. I'm going to, it's going to be a retroactive deal, but it's going to be forever. So in perpetuity for every bad word I say, and by the way, I don't try it. I don't mean to say them. They just slip out. So for every bad word I say, and we need to start sort of figure out what is a bad word and what is a, a not a bad word. So maybe y'all can help us with that. But for every bad word, 20 bucks goes into Swear Jar. And on next next tour, I promise you, I will have a stack of 20s right here, and I'll put it in there every time an F-bomb comes out or an S-bomb or whatever we define to be a bad word. And I'm going to dedicate it all to charity. Uh, not that that's going to motivate me to say more bad words. but uh, So my charity that I would like to, to dedicate this year's Swear Jar to is the Million Mile Half Marathon. Right, we all know that outdoor events and mass uh, participation events are all, they're almost impossible um, to have now amidst COVID. 
Uh, Million Mile Half Marathon is, is super cool. Uh, it, it's a premier, so it's a virtual running event that unites athletes across the globe in a shared race experience focused on making a meaningful impact in the fight against childhood cancer, right? So head on over to millionmilehalfmarathon.com. By the way, 76,000 runners. That would be a cool mass start event. Uh, one of these days. Uh, and September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. So 20 bucks. So what is you? What is that? 20, that's, uh, you know, 20 times 105. That's going to that's gonna sting a little. <laughs> but I'm sending my 20 times 105 over to the Million Mile Half Marathon. That's great. All right. Forever. I mean, forever. I mean, maybe we should pick different charities every year, but the swear, the deal with the swear jar and the give back is forever mm-hmm. on every episode of the move. I'll knock out a couple more of these comments in a question, but, and then we'll, and we'll do our, we'll kind of wrap up with our funny slides, but uh, for the final episode, Lance and George should let, should let the listeners in on one of their best party stories. You guys just brought this just up. Just mentioned one. I know. I'm also curious if cycling is similar to other sports where the partying of the past has almost disappeared due to more rigorous training and nutrition plans. Did Lance and George notice the difference between older riders when they started in their career versus younger riders later in their career? Uh, What what, was a particular tour or stage race or perhaps town known for its party scene? We had, we had a, we had a a somewhat similar conversation years ago when we talked, somebody asked us about sex on the tour. Don't get nervous, George. I'm not talking about you're safe here. Okay. Mel's over there. She's not, she may not, hopefully looking at her phone and that didn't, you know, we joked about Cipollini and all this, but you, you can't party at the Tour de France. I mean, they'll have a party tonight and they'll pa- party in the yeah. off season or, you know, if there's a period in the season where they have an, a, a natural break, they'll have some, you know, have some fun, but this sport's too hard. But the, yeah. the part of it I liked when you guys came in as the young new guys, were the old guys partiers? Yes. Yeah. Part, that's what I they thought. were, they were, it was a little more loose. It was a, it was a lot more loose and it's things. I mean, dude, when we came into the sport, they didn't have heart rate monitors. Mm. Yeah. Now they're staring at the, Watt meters and heart rate monitors, and I mean, we're here. And today, I spoke to you know one of the biggest riders in the peloton. And he's saying there's guys doing seven hour rides on the turbo trainer, just looking at their watts. I mean, imagine that, just being indoors for seven Talk hours. About somebody who needs a party. Yeah. Holy hell! Uh, here's one last comment. Uh, this is from David, and it says, uh, uh, "My housemate in Bali is from Slovenia. She told me Slovenia is the only country with love in her name." Oh, <laughs> that! I like. I it. feel like that entire country is reading that book that I had. The speaking other day. of parties, <laughs> speaking of parties, that country is going to be throwing down. Oh, I can't tonight. imagine. Yeah, they are. But they hopefully I'm, safely. The, but the, man, the that's comments be huge. Were, that we're seeing is they're they're really torn. Like oh, the yeah. emotions, of just course. the same way we were. Yeah, we were exactly describing the way we were. We, you know, people wanted to see Roglic win. They love Pogacar. I, d- I did love seeing Roglic today. I mean, what a classy, classy dude. He's out there hanging out with Pogacar and had a smile on his face. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he's just, uh, you, you can't help but be a fan of this guy. And by the way, if they're not buddies, then he's a lot smarter than he looks. He's <laughs> a lot smarter than Keanu Reeves looks. Yeah. Because that is that is the smartest thing he could have done to just be as gracious. And I'm not saying they're friends or not friends, but. Yeah, I mean that's that's uh, class. I mean he's seems like a chill guy. Just seems keeps his mouth shut. You know he's not. You never see him raising his hands, getting animated. Yeah. He just keeps to himself. And he seems like a guy who's already decided after yesterday. Okay, back to work. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, back to work. And now they have this this year's template to work off for next year's Tour de France. And uh, you know I'm guarantee Re- you recreate the, COVID. I guarantee. Well, hopefully not that, <laughs> but I guarantee you the tactics will be a lot different, knowing yeah. that. What kind of obviously the pressure now will be on Pogachar and he, his team. Your man Alan Piper is going to have to. Well, that's what I asked him today. Are we going to bring some more money in now that he won the tour because he's going to have to have a much better team to be able to, uh, you know, do what Jumbo did this year. Yeah, and muscle, money, and muscle. Yep. You know, first you get the money, <laughs> then you get the muscle. George nailed that so well. He is so good. <laughs> Might be a good time to see if we if somebody got off their ass. And made it, uh, oh, oh my lord! It looks like <laughs> they have gotten off their ass. Oh, this slide! And, and I believe this I is—I believe this is Joe Natale. <laughs> Look at the powder! Look at the powder too on my. You know, and this is—I get in enough trouble for saying bad, bad words on this. You know, swearing. 
Now we did not need Money, the mountain. Power, we, of, do. we didn't need the mountain of blow. That's that is Joe. Could you have just taken that out? Let's just let's just say that it's a mountain of LMNT. Hey, George, I, look at uh, was was my beard that thick? I mean, yes. Or is that is that was that um, buddy? That shit was. I mean, you had you, you had like, you had like a breakfast burrito in there from three days back yesterday. <laughs> wow, I kind of missed the beard. What you knowing you, it'll take you a week to get back. There. Yeah, no. Maybe if we if we end up doing worlds next weekend. You might see the beard on the way back. Okay, all right. What here's else? A, here's another slide. So. Oh yeah, come on, give me the give me the aviators right there, right oh, there. Right. Just the silver fox. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? I mean, if that's not <laughs> wow. Wait, just put the slide back up. I want to see if I look, really look like that thing. I do, actually. Amazing. And, and again, if y'all are listening, man, you got to watch this sometimes. This is some funny shit y'all send in. Yeah. Somebody painted the fox too with a We Do logo. I think um, Pete is called. Uh, okay, one. now we're talking with the aviators. The <laughs> Top Gun slide. <laughs> Justin Williams making a cameo. And Andy. Andy Schleck. <laughs> JB back there. Man. That's great. <laughs> They're coming in. I hot think, and I heavy think we have one more. Uh, Higgs, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh oh. Here's here's my favorite one. This is what I've been right, hoping you know for. I mean, this is some bullshit right here. What, <laughs> what is that? That like is, honestly, that's what you looked like the other day on the mountain bike with the with the belly showing. I mean, you had the little tank top. So I thought it'd be great to see you as a belly dancer, and here we are. You know, man, whose idea was this to do a Tour de France podcast? I I, didn't, I don't I don't deserve this. <laughs> Hey, as much shit as we give each other, this has been an awesome, awesome three weeks. I had a lot of fun. Like I, like I tell all of our friends, it's so easy for us to talk about the Tour de France. I feel like we've lived every scenario, and uh, I'm going to miss you guys when I go home tomorrow. <laughs> Got to be honest. I'm going to miss you guys. <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to miss y'all, but I've had fun. I know that. I just, and I say that just because, you know, it's, it's, it's not that. It's a bit stressful, yeah. actually. Well, yeah, you got so many people coming in and out, in and out of your house. Yeah. For all three weeks, it's it's crazy. Gotta be, I know my wife would go crazy. Yeah, it's uh, well, you know, we we did it, we and, did it again. Yeah, and and, and special thanks to Johan Bernil and Victor Hugo Pena, the uh, whole team cranking out shows. And, and without you, JB, wouldn't we would be imagine George and I just sitting here and be like, uh, <laughs> you guys would start so, wrestling, uh, we might start <laughs> wrestling or arm wrestling yeah. or. There's uh, no doubt we got a rock star team with, with JB Bolchka in the back and Higgins, chief engineer. TC. I mean, we got we got a Sheesh. solid squad here, y'all. Everybody at Inkwell Media. Yep. You know, Tiffany especially. Thank you. Yep. Yep. All right, and and as we said at the top of the show, thanks to everybody that supported us. Uh, uh, um, what? Before you shut it down, we got one more video. Oh I'm no! Throw up in here. Let Is this breaking news? Why, why didn't you say that a minute ago oh, when boy. I was already? We're, we're speaking about our better halves, so. We're gonna throw up something. Oh, about we do. Hat. That's right. This yeah. is we saved the best for last. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> What's happening on the right? Why don't you have a block under your ass, George? Wait, what am I doing? I was roll that again. Is that a consistent? Yeah. What video? are you doing? What's going or, on there? You got the I, boomerang going. No, hang on. Is that a boomerang? <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, you look a little shifty. So this is yoga. a this is a yoga class that George and I taped with my much 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 better half Anna, who's a, a badass yoga instructor. We talked about it the other day. <laughs> okay, you, you know what? We don't need to zoom in. It, that cannot be real. That's that awesome. can't be real. You're just That's sitting. So good, so good. I'm. It cannot be. And look at my face. <laughs> okay, you know what? I am never doing yoga ever again. All you yogis out there. All you. All you. Uh, enlightened people i'm done man <laughs> this is what they do you know go in there to try to get a little a little flow i and thought the class was awesome it was I'm awesome because she's the best videos she's the Anna, best and i'm gonna be signing up for that and she's whole, starting a whole yep. series of yoga classes online move with anna so look out for it i know and and, and that class is for cyclists and it's it's, it's specific online. and i that's she thought it would be a great idea to do some specific obviously regular classes but specific stuff so Yoga for cyclists, yoga for golfers, you know, yoga uh, for DJs, yoga for yogis, for yogis. <laughs> You're just yogi, right? And so, uh, but yeah, dang it, I didn't realize that I was. I knew, I knew they were filming, but I didn't. I, it's funny. Sometimes you just don't know the the what you're doing, like the faces you're making and the yeah. the twitching. God, 
You well, and another, on. maybe it's our last note here. We're, we're trying to figure out, how, if you look at the remaining fall schedule, it's crazy. The, the Giro overlaps with classics. The Vuelta overlaps with classics. So we're going to try to figure out the best way to do weekly recaps and yep. sort of look at everything that. that's going on in the scene. It's going to be all over the place for so the next two months. So you're promising me I don't have to watch two more Grand Tours? <laughs> <laughs> Not day. Well, if you catch up daily and stay hey, on top but, of it. And, yeah, don't forget the. We got Tour of Flanders and Paris Roubaix coming up as well, which and the World Championships in in the fall, which is super exciting. So we got some great racing left. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging with us the last three weeks. We hope we know it's crazy times, unprecedented, weird, um, unfortunate times, but uh, we appreciate it, and uh, we look forward to you know, coming back at, in the fall, and then looking forward to Tour Twenty Twenty One. So with that, we out. We out, y'all. We out. See you. Vamos. Sure. Vamos. Vamos. We're gonna go for a bike right now, right? I think so. Yeah, I got your e-bike charged up. You're He's good. He's going to be Perfect. fast with that clean shave. All right, see you guys later. See you guys. <laughs>